Okay, in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to work with a new type of node called an animated sprite. And most importantly, we're going to learn how to instantiate that animated sprite using code. So let's go ahead and jump in. So in order to do that, we're going to need some graphics to build our animated sprite. So I'm going to come over to the browser and I have already loaded this up, but I'm gonna to go to piscalapp.com. And this is just a really simple online editor for making animated sprites and, and pixel art. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on create sprite and it's going to load up the interface. I can zoom in and out of this using the scroll wheel on my mouse. And one thing that I want you to notice is that this palette that I'm seeing in front of me is 32 by 32 pixels. So relatively small, which is good. That's what we want. So what we're gonna do is actually create a circle. So I'm gonna come over here and click on the circle tool. I am gonna come all the way up to the upper left-hand corner, holding down the shift key so that I lock the aspect ratio. I'm gonna click and draw a 32 by 32 pixel circle, just like that. The default color in Piscal is black, which you can see right here, so I have this black outline. Now that I've done that, what I wanna do is click on the paint bucket tool, and I am going to change the color of the paint bucket. I'm gonna click right here, and I'm actually gonna fill this with white paint. So I happen to know the code for white is, is F, 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 F. Make sure that color is selected and then making sure the paint bucket tool is pressed. I'm gonna come over here and boom, fill my circle with white, just like that. Now that I've created this, I'm going to download it. So over here on the right hand side, I'm gonna click on exports and there's a couple of different options here. You can download a GIF or a PNG. I want the PNG or portable network graphic. And I'm gonna click download here. Boom, it downloaded to my computer and it's just called newpiscal.png. We'll look at that in a minute. Now I'm gonna do this whole process one more time just to create a different color. So I'm gonna come back over to the color picker and let's put in FF1234. That should be pure red. I'm gonna make sure that's selected and with the paint bucket tool, I'm just gonna change this to red. And I'm gonna download this again by clicking download and boom, that's gonna come down. And then finally, let's do it one last time. But this time, let's pick uh, kind of a pure yellow, something like that. And with that selected, I'm gonna fill it, and then I am going to download the sprite again. Okay, so that's all I needed to do with Piscal. So you could go ahead and close your browser. Now, let me come down to my desktop, and you can see here the three files I've just downloaded are here. And I let's give these some meaningful names. So I'm going to name the first one circle white and then underscore 32, just so I remember that it's 32 by 32 pixels. And I'll call this one circle red underscore 32. And I'm gonna call this one circle yellow underscore 32. Excellent. Okay, so let me show you how to use these three graphics in a Godot project. So what I'm gonna do is switch over to Godot. And you could see here, I have a little bit of a starter project. I have a main scene, and in main scene, of course, has a root node, and the root node has a color rectangle as a child, and that's called header, that's this gray box here, and header has a label under it, and that label has a custom font, and I'm using a font called Deadly Advance, and it just simply says instantiating a scene with code. And then the other node that is a child of root is body. And that's this white box down here. It's just a color rect and I renamed it body. Of course, I can click play and just see that everything loads up just, just fine. And the other thing you'll notice is that I have associated a script just like we did in the previous tutorial. 
And so you can see here main.gd. If I click here on this, I can see my starter code in here. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna do is bring in those three files into Godot. So I'm just going to literally select the three files and I'm just gonna drag them over to my resources panel. And boom, 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 they get imported really easily. I am actually going to use those three files in a different scene because this tutorial is about instantiating a scene with code. Now, instantiating is just a fancy wor word for creating a copy of a scene. So let's walk through this step together. So what I'm going to do is actually come up to the scene menu and I'm going to close the scene that I have open, which is main scene. And now I'm left with it feels like the beginning of a new project because it's empty. I don't have a scene open, but of course I know I'm in my existing project because of the information up here at the top. And if I look at my resources folder, I can see all of the things that I've imported. So for this particular scene, we're gonna use a new type of node. And so the root node of this new scene, we're gonna click on other node and we're gonna do a search for animated sprite. And if you start typing in in the search, it's actually a child of Node2D and it's called Animated Sprite. So I'm going to go ahead and click Animated Sprite. So that's my root node now. And then I'm going to come over to the inspector panel and you can see here that the first property is the frames property. And right now it's empty. But what I want to do is actually tell Godot that I want to load some new sprite frames for this animated sprite. And so I'm going to select that. And then just like we did with font data, we have to select that. And when you do that, down at the bottom, you will get the animation frames and the sprite frames dock will pop up. And so what we want to do is actually add these images as frames to our animated sprite. And so how can I do that? Well, what I can do is actually click on this folder and it's going to lead me to my resources directory of my project. And you can see here that I have access to my PNG files that I loaded. So I'm actually going to select all three of those by holding down shift. And then I'm going to click open. And boom, Godot imports these images, each one as a frame. So you can see here I have frame zero is red. Frame one is white and frame two is yellow. And if I wasn't happy with the order of these, I could move this over. I can use these arrows to rearrange these however I want. But I think what I'll do is start with red, then I'll keep white as number one, and then yellow as the third, or in this case, zero, one, two frames. And so that's all I'm gonna do here. And I am, that that's how simple this particular scene is going to be. So I'm actually going to save this and Godot is gonna remind me, hey, wait a minute, you haven't given this scene a name, so let's name it. Now you'll see here, Godot's trying to be helpful and it wants to call this animated sprite, dot T-S-C-N. And that's okay, we can keep that name. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save. And now what I wanna do, you can actually see right here at the origin, you can see our animated sprite. That's cause this scene is still open. What I wanna do now is actually close that scene. So I'm gonna click scene and I'm gonna close this scene and I'm back to no scenes open. So what I wanna do is open main scene back up. So how do I do that? There's a couple of ways. I could come up to the scene menu and I could click quick open or open recent, which would show me animated sprite scene and my main scene. But actually the easiest way in my opinion is to just come down to the file system dock and double click on main scene. And we're back to our main scene. Now I wanna show you something. I could, if I wanted to select animated sprite scene and add these, I could just drag and drop these as children onto my scene. And look what's happening to my scene tree. I am getting copies of the animated sprite added to the scene tree. And so if I run this code, let's see what happens. I have three copies of my animated sprite scene on my display. 
Now, something that you'll notice, of course, is that these animated sprites actually aren't doing anything. They're all just red because that's the first frame. So what I can do is actually select one of these animated sprites, come over to the inspector panel and tell it to set the property playing to be on. Now watch what happens when we do that. It starts animating in looping through all three frames. So let me go ahead and play this. And you can see that one of the three animated sprite scenes that I dragged onto my main scene is actually playing now. And of course I could turn on that playing for all three of them just by checking that box. And you can see, if you look here, it's actually counting through its frames. One, two, three, one, two, three. And it's just looping and looping and looping, just like that. All right? Now, I just wanted to show you that that's a possibility. In this lesson, we are going to do the same thing, but we're going to do it with code. In other words, we're going to instantiate three copies of the animated sprite scene. So what I'm going to do is actually select these, right-click, and I'm going to delete them. And I'm going to say, Godot, get rid of those copies. Notice I just deleted copies because if I come back down to my resource panel or my resources dock, I can see here animated sprite is still there. It's still available for me to use. All right. So how do we instantiate the animated sprite scene using code? First thing we need to do is click here and jump over to our main.gd script file. And just to keep things simple, I'm going to remove a bunch of this boilerplate code that Godot includes in there. And we're going to go ahead and work in the ready function. So just to make sure that this is working, I always like to start out with a print statement. So I'm just going to start out and say testing dot dot dot. Let's just make sure that this works. I'm going to save this and I'm going to go ahead and click play. And when I click play, if everything's wired up correctly, I should see the word testing down here in my output panel. And of course, that's working, so that's the only check that I need. So now what we want to do is create a copy or instantiate the animated sprite scene using code. So how do we do that? Well, it's actually really simple. What we can do is we're going to create a var, a variable, and I can name this variable anything I want, but I'll, I'm going to call it circle one. And I am going to tell Godot that I want this new variable. And remember, variables are just placeholders. They store information that I actually want to load something into that variable. And specifically, what do I want to load? Well, I'm going to tell Godot that I want it to look in the resources folder and I want to load up the scene called animated sprite.tscn. So I'm telling Godot to load that animated sprite scene. After it loads it, we have to tell it one more thing. I want it to create an instance. So I put dot instance and notice that that word instance is blue. That's because it's a method. So what does this line of code mean? It says, I create a variable called circle one, and we're going to load something out of the resources folder. What are we loading? We're loading the animated sprite scene, and we're telling Godot to create a copy, an instance of it. And now all I need to do is tell Godot, I want you to add that child to our scene. And so I say add child circle one. Notice that circle one, it's the same name as this variable here. So I'm going to go ahead and save this and click play and take a look at what happens. I have my same scene here. And then in the upper left hand corner at origin zero zero, I have my circle one animated sprite that I loaded up. Now, of course, we actually don't want it at zero, zero, that position. So let's go ahead and alter our code. So how could we change the position of that animated sprite scene? Easy. What we do is we say circle one dot position. We want to change the position property of circle one. And specifically, we want to change its X value by setting it to the middle of the page. And that's 512. And then we want to do the same thing for the Y value. 
and I want it to be below that header a little bit, so I am going to set the Y position of circle one to be at a value of 200. So if I save my code and run, I should see my instantiated scene, animated sprite, here in the middle of my page. Excellent. So Godot's listening to my commands that I'm giving it through code. Now, importantly, I don't want my animated sprite to be static. I actually want it to animate. And so I have to tell Godot to go ahead and do that. So how do I do that? I say circle one dot playing equals true. In other words, I want the playing property of circle one to be true. And so what I can do is click play and let's see what happens. And now we see our animated sprite actually animating. Okay, excellent. Now, one last thing that we should do is give this instance of animated sprite a name. And so I'm gonna say circle.1.name equals, and then I can give it a name. And so I could call this anything I want, but I'm gonna call this my first circle, just like that. Now, we can't see that. It doesn't show up anywhere in our scene, but we know that this instance of animated sprite has that name, okay? Its name is not circle one. Circle one is only for the programmer here in the code. But in the actual scene, the name property of that copy of the animated sprite is gonna be my first circle. Now, if I wanna add a second animated sprite, it's really easy. What I can do is copy these three lines of code and paste them down here. And notice that they're all indented one level. Now, immediately, Godot is going to complain. And if I look here, I'm seeing an error in red text. It's saying variable circle one already defined. And so Godot is telling us you can't have two variables with the same name. And so I'm going to just quickly change this to circle two. And I have to change all of these to circle two. Let's go ahead and play this and see what happens. Now, strangely, I added, I told Godot to add another instance of animated sprite, but I only see one. Why is that? Well, it's actually because these two animated sprites are right on top of each other. They have the same X and Y position. So if we want to see them differently, I need to change their positions. So for circle two, I'm just going to tell it to be a little bit lower and I'm gonna move it down to Y position 300. And if I do that, I can see now that I actually have two instances or copies of animated sprite. And then of course, I shouldn't keep these names the same, so I'm gonna call this my second circle. And finally, I'm gonna copy all that code one more time, delete these extra lines, we don't need those. And uh, again, Godot is warning me, hep, circle two is a variable that's already defined. You can't use it twice. So what I have to do is just rename it like this. And I have to make sure that I am changing it here and my third circle. And for this one, I won't make it blink. Let's, let's keep playing off. The animation is gonna be off. And if I play it, I see, oh, it's right on top of the other one. So what do I need to do? I need to change its Y value or its X value. And voila, I should see three copies of the animated sprite. And two of them are playing, their animations are running, and then one of them is stopped. So there's actually one last thing that I want to show you that we can do with animated sprites. So one of the properties we can change is the scale of a animated sprite. And so what we can do is I can type circle three dot scale, and I can change the scale of the X value. In other words, the width value. I can say I want it to be two times its normal scale. And I can actually copy that line of code, come down here and change the Y value and double it to two. Now, when I save my code and run it, let's see what happens. I have one big instance of the animated sprite. 
it's twice as big. It's scaled up two times. And then, of course, I could also make it smaller by making it 0.5 of its scale, which would make it half of its normal size. So it could look like that. And then finally, one last thing that we might want to do is actually tell Godot that we don't want these to blink. We don't want them to animate indefinitely. So they might be all set to false. But what we can do, tell Godot what frame of the animated sprite we want to set. So how do we do that? Really easy. We adjust the frame property. Whoops. Frame equals zero for circle one. And then I'm going to turn circle two. I'm going to tell its frame to be equal to one. And then our small circle three here, I'm going to set that frame to be equal to two. And now try to guess what's going to happen here. If I play this, I have one set to frame zero, which is red one set to frame one, which is white, and one set to frame two, which is yellow. And how do I know that? Well, if I go back into my animated sprite by clicking on it and coming over to 2D and clicking on it, I can see that frame zero is red, frame one is white, and frame two is yellow. All right, let me close that, come back over to our code. So there you go, folks instantiating scenes using code. And not only did we learn how to instantiate scenes, we also learned how to adjust their position, specify whether or not the animation is playing. We gave these copies of animated sprite names, and we learned how to specify which frame should be showing. And that's all for this tutorial. Thanks, everyone.